late to the interview because I was reading the AV Club review. <laughs> Oh, shit, I am ready. Like, oh I'll up. A B plus from the AV club is an A anywhere else. I'm That's very true. happy. That's true. That's true. I was reading some stuff you said at AFI Fest, and you said that first seeing Tick, Tick, Boom was sort of like, felt like a message in a bottle sort of just for you. And I think a lot of people feel that way about Jonathan Larson's work in general. Um, why do you think people connect with him, like, and his work so deeply? I, I can tell you what I connected with about Rent when I saw it when I was 17. It felt messy and homemade and personal in a way that musicals don't always feel, you know. A lot, a lot of the Broadway musicals I'd seen I loved. I was a fan of musical theater from doing shows in high school, but they just feel like they, they came from some other place. It didn't feel like you could you at home could write one. Um, but this was very clearly someone writing about his friends and his community. It was the most diverse cast I'd ever seen in a Broadway show, and that opened things up in me I didn't know were possible. But at the end of the day, it's also about artists living and dying and trying to figure out how to do what they love. Um, I was definitely a, a high school kid who like walked around with a camcorder and it was easier for me to film my friends than hang out with my friends. So when Roger calls on, on Mark saying, you pretend to create and observe, but you really detach, I felt personally attacked in the back row of the Nederlander Theater when I saw Tick, tick, boom, my senior year of college, it felt like all of those preoccupations in a more concentrated and personal form. Um, it was like, hey, here's what your 20s are gonna look like, dude, <laughs> if you're really trying to do this. And so, you know, that message in the bottle thing feels really real, but I think people respond to it because it feels homemade and feels like it's for them, and you feel artists in it that are flawed and still trying to do their best and get sidetracked by the wrong things and, and come back to what they love. Um, that's true of both Rent and Tick, Tick, Boom. I mean, I will say that part of Tick, Tick, Boom is, is Jonathan like struggling being like, I'm gonna be 30 and I haven't done this, but Sondheim has done this. That being said, you were 28 when In the Heights won a Tony. Would Jonathan Larson be mad at you? Probably. You know, when you choose Jonathan Larson as your hero, you're so superstitious um, because Jonathan never lived to see the mark his work made on the world. And that's so, it's such, it's so tragic. And so one of the things that was really our thesis statement about Tick, Tick, Boom was this is not about Jonathan's death. This is about his life. And this is about what a life force he was to his friends and, and the people who loved him. I think about that a lot. I think about the fact that I, I actually uh, have been lucky enough to survive, to live, to see how my work is connected uh, with the world. And I feel really grateful for that. And I feel a little Aaron Burr, like I don't know why I got to live and Jonathan isn't 61 years old and sitting next to me and maybe yelling at me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was gonna ask sort of, you know, you did a limited run of Tick, Tick, Boom sort of eight months before Hamilton came out, which A, like, how did you get it all done? And B, how did sort of working on that show mark sort of that point in your life? I did this show about Jonathan Larson at Crossroads when I was at a Crossroads. I was incredibly pregnant with Hamilton uh, at the time. We would start rehearsals four months later. Um, my wife was incredibly pregnant with our first child. Um, and I'm there doing Tick, Tick, Boom, the show that clarified my resolve to do this with Karen Olivo, who was my co-star on my first show in The Heights, and Leslie Odom Jr., who would be my future co-star on the next show. So it, it is this weird vortex uh, when I'm, in, I'm, I'm actually in the in-between period um, in all the phases of my life. My biggest takeaway from that production was actually um, how amazing it was to meet all the real life inspirations in Jonathan's life who are still alive. His best friend, uh, Matt O'Grady, on whom Michael was based, is still around. Um, it, you know, his girlfriend was there, his family was there, and, and there's something about when Tick, Tick, Boom is performed, it's like Jonathan is still around because that was so semi-autobiographical um, and it was him writing about his friends and where he was at. It was exciting to draw on that community as a resource uh, so that we could get the most well-rounded version of Jonathan on screen, not a plaster saint, um, but, but, you know, the times when he's frustrating and the times when he's impatient and self-absorbed and, um, you know, all of it, just as much of it on the screen as we could muster. Actions.